Hello everyone, welcome to the session. In this session, we are going to discuss about credit card authorization process in e-commerce website. What is credit card authorization? Payment authorization is the process through which card issuer or customer bank put the hold on the requested amount against the credit card when customer make the payment. In case customer does not have sufficient amount in the credit card, payment transaction is declined and authorization is failed and also order not placed. Authorized amount should be settled or captured before authorization period is expired. Once authorization is expired, settlement cannot be made. Authorization period can vary from 1 to 30 days depending on the type of card like if it's visa some card having seven days some card having 20 days of authorization period i have also mentioned here one note in authorization no money is transferred into merchant account there is no movement of money in the authorization process to any account at all only hold on the amount is put and that amount cannot be used by the customer and customer get the message about amount debit from the credit card for customer it seems money deducted from the credit card but behind the scene it is the hold on the requested amount actual money movement into merchant account happen at the time of settlement not at the time of authorization and this diagram is showing the authorization flow in the e-commerce website here you can see five boxes each box is representing the party so we have five party involved in the authorization process the black arrow you can see one three two four you can see these represents the authorization request and blue arrows are showing the the response of the authorization process so here at the bottom left card holder which is the customer customer visited, visited the e-commerce website and want to place an order so customer is on the checkout page and customer entering the credit card details like credit card number cbv number name billing address all these details so when customer click on the place order the merchant application or e-commerce website sends the payment details to the payment gateway you can see the step one then payment gateway validate validate the request if all necessary fields are present in the request or not and also applies the fraud check mechanism if configured and also apply few manual rules like maximum price of for one order cannot be more than this so if configured so all these kind of validations and checks are executed so once everything is fine with the request payment gateway sends the request to the payment processor down the line and also one thing you need to notice for different cards you may have different payment processors that depends on the merchant or business and you can also see i have also mentioned in the payment processor box the acquiring bank so the reason being there are many acquiring banks or merchant bank which are having own payment processor if merchant is using the bank which is having own payment processor in that case in the box you can only mention the acquiring bank if merchant or business chosen the third party processor payment processor in that case you can mention the payment processor here suppose merchant has chosen the different payment processor for visa for American Express different pay payment processor and all these configuration also man man maintained at the payment gateway end so that so like if request is coming for the visa card then it can 
send the request to the Bija payment processor. So once payment gateway is understand, we have to send the request. Which payment gateway sends the request to? It forwards or sends the request to that payment processor or acquiring bank. Once the payment processor receives the authorization request, it checks which card network request needs to be sent. For example, if request is from Bija credit card, then payment processor should send the request to the Bija network. If it is from American Express, then credit card, then authorization request should be sent to the American Express MX card network. So how it understand to which network the request should be sent? Looking at the first digit of the credit card number, payment processor can understand where to send the request. So once it understand to which card network request needs to be sent, it forward or sends that request to the card network. In the step three. So once card network receives the request of payment authorization, it also do some own validations or checks, and then it forwards the request to the corresponding issuing bank of that credit card. So if you have got the credit card from HSBC, it will it will sends the request to the HSBC bank. So how card network understand to which bank to which issuing bank that authorization request should be sent. So looking at the first six digit of the credit card number and first six digits represent the bank identification number. So once it understand, it sends the request to the authorization request to the issuing bank. So after the issuing bank receives the request from card network, issuing banks perform own checks like if credit card is valid or not, it is not blocked. So all these basic checks and also checks if customer having the sufficient amount in the credit card. So once all the checks are performed, passed, issuing bank approved that request and response is sent to the card network. If issuing bank finds any issue with the credit card or amount is not sufficient, it declines the authorization request and sends the response to the card network. Issuing bank also communicates to the customer via mail or SMS. So once card network receives the response from the issuing bank, it forward that response to the payment processor. Six step, then payment processor forward that response to the payment gateway. Seventh step and payment gateway forwards that request to the merchant. Based on the response received from the merchant, whether it declined or approved, the e-commerce e website allow customer to place or reject the order. If the authorization re response is approved, then customer will able to place the order. If it is declined, then customer will not able to proceed with the order placement. So this is how the authorization flow works. Few important points about payment gateways like it also help us to check the past transactions as well. So it 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 stores all these transactions details status all these details about the transaction. So you can also extract the report from payment gateway. So these kind of there are many features are provided by the payment gateway. We will see when we will create one separate video on the payment gateway. Don't get confused with the payment processor or acquiring bank. Sometimes it happens acquiring bank also have own payment processor. So in that case, be right acquiring bank or acquirer. So that depends on the how business has set up their payment processor or acquiring bank. In market, we have a many payment processor region wise like US, UK, 
so and these payment processor are called third party payment processor so in the in in that case payment processor is different entity acquiring bank would be a different entity this is how the payment authorization flow works in the e-commerce website i have given the example of e-commerce website but the core concept of payment authorization is same across any channel also one point i would like to highlight is customer enters all the details like credit card number cvv number billing address on the website the merchant do not store the credit card number all the sensitive information cvv number at there and at all it just forward the request to the payment gateway with those fields here i have also mentioned about involved parties few points merchant payment gateway i have already explained in the diagram go through if you want payment processor card network issuing bank that's all for this session thanks for watching see you in the next video